Who is your daddy? I am your father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? So should we talk about, should we kick the show off and talk about basketball? I know that's a big thing that everybody's really excited about is us getting into sports. All right, let me, hang on, let me set a timer. Let's do that. We'll give ourselves, (laughs) hang on, let me set a timer. How about three minutes to talk about basketball? All right, so the only thing I want to talk about is the fact that uh, Ohio State lost. That makes me happy. So Um, Ohio State must have just lost because they were coming out of the wire with Gonzaga when I turned it off. Yeah, the Zags finished them off 90 to 84. Nice. Um, I'm not that confident in Michigan right now after watching their first game. They were absolutely hideous. If they were playing a semi-decent team in that first round, they would have easily lost. The team they were playing against was really bad. Like They could not hit any shots, and Michigan was just... God awful. And we like, were, that and, was the worst Michigan I've was, seen him play all year. playing tonight against the number six team, right? I forget who it is, though. Yeah. Uh, Houston. Houston. I'm not even going to be able to watch it because I watched the first game. I was at my dad's house. He's got cable. I don't have cable. And so I was trying to watch it with my little Cody stick, but nobody has the game. So I'm like, oh, great. You can just watch it on your browser with CBS, can't you? Just go to see. Don't you have to? Don't you have to like pay for it though, or something? Oh, you might have to have a subscription. Yeah, you have to have some type of like uh, cable subscription to watch it online. Dumb. So dumb. Yeah, they want you to pay for that crap. Nope. Jerks. The real story of March Madness to me so far has been uh, UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Of That's course, a terrible name. A highly coveted university. Of course, everyone mm-hmm. wants to go there. Uh, they were the first 16 seed to knock off number one seed. They beat Virginia, who was not just one of one of four one seeds. They were the number one overall seed, I believe, out of all four. Yeah, they are. Time. So they were really definitely that number one. That is the overall. first time a 16 seed has won a game in this tournament, which is pretty impressive for them. And then they just won again tonight. They just beat Tennessee, so they have won out, now won two games. No, that was a different team, wasn't that? That was that's oh, that was Loyola. Loyola. That was Loyola. Chicago. Hey, that's another. That's- little bit of a Cinderella team, right? Loyola, Chicago. Yeah, they're uh, uh, 11 seed. There you go. Which I like. I like Tennessee, so I'm sad that Tennessee lost. But... That's right. UMBC plays again on Sunday, so we'll find out what happens. Well, by the time people listen to this, they'll know what happens. All right, we got 50 seconds left. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about basketball? Well, let's just hope Michigan gets into the Sweet 16. That's all I care about. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see the That's Big it. Ten represented somehow. Now that it's Purdue, Purdue's still in it, though, I think, right? I think Purdue's still in it. Uh, yeah, they're in it. Yeah, we still have a few. Actually, I just realized. I don't know why I didn't realize this. Michigan's playing right now. They're winning by three. Yeah, they're playing Houston we'll right now. By the time we're done, yeah. you might be able to watch the second half, or you can update no. us as we go. I'll just. I'm just gonna keep ESPN on my phone. All right, we are. All right, everybody, fast forward to four minutes and nineteen seconds. I love that you give them the instruction after. <laughs> We are done well, recording. I just want to make sure they're okay. <laughs> I want to make sure we're taking care so, of our fans. So, tell you what, if you don't like basketball and this really ticked you off, rewind it to the start of the show, start the show over, and fast yeah. forward it to about the four minute and 20 second, 30 second mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We're just and here. And we're going to move on. We're here for yep. you guys. We are here with episode 118 of Fathers of the Grind. Actually, hang on. Let me try more of an NPR voice. Welcome to episode 118 of Fathers of the Grind podcast. This Tim, is... here's what I need you to do with that voice. Yeah. I need you to record you reading the entire Bible, <laughs> and then I'm going to listen to you every morning for at least a verse a day. Um, do it, You have to do it in that voice, so yeah. you cannot change the tone at all. Right. I'm, I'm actually, Jesus. I'm not going to do the whole Bible. That's a, little, that's a little too much work, but I will just do the really judgmental passages from Leviticus for you. Yeah, just get. To, yeah, let's just get to the heart of let's what just, I need to hear. Let's just get to the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, only read the scriptures yeah. that condemn me to hell. Yeah. Thank you. Let's just do those. Let's just do those. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, but well, we are in episode 118 of Fathers of the Grind. Still trying to figure out what this show is going to be now that only one of us plays video games. We'll figure it out. We'll get there. 
I mean, I can give you. I think we decided I was going to give you like weight updates every week. I can do that. Well, I did go to the gym and weigh myself today. That is the one thing that I assumed because I've I've been playing three different games this past week that I'm going to yeah. share about, and I just assumed the only game you're playing is one called Weight Watchers. It's the only one I could think of for you. It's an amazing game watching yeah. your weight fluctuate. I, I would bet money there's a Weight Watchers DS game. I bet there you there's probably a, there's is. probably a There DS probably game. is. I feel like there was like a like a workout like some type of like weight workout game for like the 3DS, which I don't know why. Or maybe it was the Wii. Well, the maybe Wii I'm of course had Wii. Wii Fit, right? And then Wii yeah. Fit. Yeah. Yeah, but there was whatever. other ones that had like like I feel like there was one that had like a cover where it was a uh, um had something around the waist pulling it tighter and it was like a weight oh one. i, I can picture that yeah what was that i think no, that was biggest loser they had a biggest loser oh, okay video. maybe that's what it was yeah yeah okay. which i i don't remember if you actually do exercises for that or if you just control fat characters that are trying to get skinny i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember so last night i i hung out with my friend and we decided to uh we started you know started off talking and then he he turned on this ps4 because i guess i wasn't very interesting and he went to Netflix, and he was like, what about this? And it was Bill Burr's special. Yeah. I don't remember what it's called. And he did an entire segment on fat people, yeah. and I absolutely loved it. Yes. Loved everything he said. <laughs> I am so, like, this is coming from somebody who's been fat his whole life. Like, I am so over, like, fat people talking about being fat shamed and all this stuff. Like, they don't have a choice. I just thought it was hilarious oh, it's, it's how really he good. ripped them to shreds. He's like, oh, she's so brave. <laughs> <laughs> yep, next time I see a fireman going into a fire, I'm just going to think about that yeah. fat hey, person hey, who was half naked. Hey, you're just like that fat actress on the magazine cover. <laughs> <laughs> you're so brave. So brave. <laughs> yep. It was good. I, I enjoyed the entire... There was a couple segments. I was like, oh, that's not that funny. Yeah. But overall, for an hour and 15 minutes, he had some good stuff. Yeah, he's great. He's one of my favorite rant-style comics. I think he's I think he's fantastic. Yeah, there was like one where he was about ready to tell a story, but then he just veered off and started bashing women. And he was like, he was like, that has nothing to do with my joke. I just wanted to be a dick. And I was like, I love you. You're freaking awesome. <laughs> You're going to have to beep that out. Yeah, he's... He's he's tough to beat. It's, it's when you listen to certain comedians that you just feel like nail that perfect cadence of a of a special of a performance, and you go back and watch some other ones. They're just not as good. Bill Burr's the man. Yeah, I love that guy. I mean, I'm not obviously you know, like funny like comedians and stuff, but that's like my type of humor. Like oh, yeah. I like to rant. Like when I'm at work, I'll just start ranting about stuff. I'll even like preach sermons to to people and i'll start cussing and ranting in the middle of my sermon they're like i don't know if i should be praising jesus or yelling at you right now for all my language but yeah that's you know what i do uh where bill burr would be a great fit is in the fathers of the grind group on facebook oh, yeah. he'd be a great fit in there which is really funny if any of you happen to be listening you're like hey what what group well it's a secret group and if you're not in it then that's probably for good reason. I'm just kidding. You can totally join it if you want to, unless you are an admin of a larger group that we will not name. <laughs> Beyond. <laughs> Beyond. <laughs> All right. So a couple of things I've been playing this past week. I did finish the game Rhyme. It is a very emotional game. It actually, because it's totally wordless, but it tells an emotional story and it has you know quite an ending where you kind of realize what happened and what the game has been about. Uh, it reminded me of Brothers a bit, just in terms of the fact that there's no words throughout it, but it is emotional. The music's really good, and some of the puzzles are pretty good. Not amazing. They're really not like they won't blow your mind. How long? Did, how long did it take to play that one? Um, if if you use some kind of guide, because some of the puzzles aren't necessarily tough, but it takes a while to see in the environment where they want you to go. I would say it won't take you more than three hours. I went ahead and just stumbled oh, my own okay. way. I didn't realize it was that short. I, I stumbled my own way through it, my own way through it, and probably was more like in the five, five and a half range because there was a few puzzles I got stuck on and just sat there for a little while. Um, I'm looking but, for like a 25 minute game. Like I just oh. want a game that lasts like 25 minutes. Yeah. So I can just say I beat it. I'm sure Biggest Loser, you can play around in 25 <laughs> minutes in that yeah, game. I can do that probably. Uh, so I finished that. I also played through this game that I had bought a long time ago. Um, when it, it was one of those times when there was a whole bunch of sales and you get overly excited. And as some people I've seen point out, sometimes it's more exciting to buy games on sale than it is to play the actual games because you just feel that feels like a game in and of itself to save money. Um, so anyway, this is one of those ones that I bought in a whole batch of other games. And this was called Valley. 
um, from Blue Isle Studios. Um, the only other game that I know that they did was like the there was some Sherlock Holmes mystery game I think they did. I think it was free on one of the services recently. So, mm-hmm. so anyway, they're not known for a whole bunch of stuff yet. They're relatively young um, developer. Valley is not bad at all. I actually think you might kind of like this game. Um, I'm not saying you'll... And why is that? So, number one, it's a first-person game. Number two, it um, it's pretty. It's a good-looking game. But number three, there's some really fast-paced action in it when I was fully expecting a walking simulator. It's totally what, okay. I was, totally what I was expecting. There are a lot of walking simulator elements to it. There's a mystery. You're trying to figure out what happened on this island. There's a whole bunch of testing that's been happening from back in World War II, and you're discovering this technology that they had hidden on this island, and you're just like this um, archaeologist or something. And the idea is that pretty, pretty much right away in the game, you find these um, kind of mech, this mech suit that is primarily on your legs and it attaches up to one arm and it enables you to run super fast, jump super far, and then you get upgrades as you go throughout the game. There's no shooting in it, really, but you do fire this this energy blast out of your hand. And so there are a few moments where you have to defeat kind of these Spectre-style enemies. So it's mm-hmm. it's got a few shooting-like segments, but please don't... I hope no one misunderstands me. This is not a first-person shooter. It's definitely more of an adventure game than it is a shooter, but some of the segments where you have to run really fast and, and launch yourself through the air, you, you got you get moving real quick. It feels like a fast-paced game. So mm-hmm. I think it's fascinating. Um, it's one of those games that pretty much no one talked about. I think Valley is a really intriguing game with a cool story. And you like a mystery, right? So it's a yeah. it's a really cool story about what unfolded and and you're hearing all this stuff being told through audio logs that are coming through your suit that get unlocked as you progress throughout the island. And uh, I liked it a lot. I think Valley is a solid game. So you've got it for free. If you're bored and want to try something out, it's a little bit unique. Uh, give it a shot. I don't think you'll hate it. I think you might say, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, but I don't care that much about it. I do think it's worth you trying. I just remember when it was launching, I was interested in it. But after the reviews came out, it wasn't like something I was like, oh, I really need to play this. But... I just went to the Metacritic. It's not that bad. It's actually a 72. Yeah. So I think it was probably, at that time, I was probably following IGN a little too much, and they gave it a 50. Okay. And I was probably like, hmm, I don't know. Really and about it is that. not a long game. Another one that's in that kind of three to four hour range. Um, there's tons of collectibles that apparently you can use to unlock. Um, so you can collect these different things that will unlock um, secret areas in this tomb or in this pyramid, and that will unlock additional abilities for your suit. I don't know what all those are. I didn't go back to recollect all the things that I had missed. I unlocked enough stuff that I felt like I get it, and this is cool. This is fun. There was a few moments. It's not. A, it's not at all a horror game, but there's a few moments that genuinely made me jump because the the sound is really good in it. The sound quality is very good. The music's very good. So I had headphones in while I was playing, and there's a few moments where, you know, an enemy kind of snuck up on me. I heard the whooshing sound of it appearing, and then I turned, and there it was. So I, I had a few moments where it made me jump. So anyway, all that to say. I was pleasantly surprised by Valley. For those of you out there who are curious about it, it's usually pretty cheap. Uh, if it's not currently cheap now, it will be on a sale again in the future. And uh, it's definitely worth checking out. I thought it was pretty good. And I finally jumped into a game I've been talking up for a long time as a backlog game I want to get to. I am now in Chapter 5, I think, of Dishonored 2. I am playing as Emily Caldwin, the, the Empress's daughter from Dishonored 1. Mm-hmm. spoiler alert for Dishonored 1 she doesn't die she grows up um, and boy that game has some cool lore I, I actually this time have been reading a lot more of the stuff that they have there's tons of letters and notices and history books and stuff and I've actually been skimming through some of that stuff more than usual and the lore of that game is really fascinating Bethesda really did a bang up job with that game so there's some really cool stuff in there the setting of course very similar to Dishonored 1 a whole bunch of crap goes down right at the start of that game. Things seem happy, and a whole bunch of stuff happens. You're betrayed by a bunch of people, and you're off on your adventure. You pick whether you want Corvo or Emily, and that, I think, pretty dramatically changes what that experience is like. Because everything I'm seeing is Emily, and the discussions I'm having, they could not be the same if I were Corvo. So I imagine it's a different experience. Very, very yep. cool. This this game is surprisingly pretty. The environments look really good until you get up close. Some elements look really janky and jagged and not great but for the most part the game is nice looking the characters yeah. look like i would say just an improved version of the first game they still have a 
very stylized cartoony look to them but that's not a bad thing i think it looks fine um overall good but it is more dishonored so if you didn't really dig that first person style stealth action game um this might not be for you but i do encourage you to give it a try if you've never played the first dishonored that game still holds up great and this to me feels like um just a better looking version of more of that good stuff it's good it's still really good. Yeah, I don't think they changed much from Dishonored to Dishonored 2. I don't think they did either. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, no. There's there's a few elements. I think, the, I think their big thing was you could play as two different people. Right, yeah. Who play differently. Right, and there's a whole bunch of different things to unlock. You can go to the black market to upgrade your gear. You can um, use uh, runes, of course. You've got this heartbeat thing you can hold up, and it can guide you to runes and um, what are they called? The bone things. Bone charms. Yes, and you can use those to upgrade stuff and, and equip new abilities. You can up see. I still know things about video games. You do. Just so well you know. done. It's the it's not the fight, fight button. Not the fight button. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, they they do a really good job in that game. I think of creating an atmosphere that's believable. It's got such a cool each city that you're in and the people that are there. It kind of at times has a little bit of Bioshock look and feel, and then at times it'll remind me a little of a fable in some ways. But more often than not, it's just its own unique thing. So yeah. I really like it. It's it's a very cool – at times it's kind of steampunk, and at times it feels modern. At times it feels medieval. Um, but it's got its own special flavor. So I highly recommend these games. If you haven't played Dishonored 1 and 2, I can't imagine Dishonored 1 costs much money. You could find the, the remastered version for super cheap, I imagine. And then Dishonored 2 now has been out for a year and a half. It's probably also relatively cheap. So Yeah. Really enjoying Definitely that. Definitely worth playing both of those. Yep. Good. I want to complain about one thing. Um, yep. I just want you to know that Rocket League's fight button is broken. It's not working because I keep pushing it and nobody's fighting. That it just sits there. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't. So I wouldn't play video games either that. if that happened to me. You know, I wouldn't play video games either if I were you because that's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm just gonna play Weight Watchers. It's working out pretty good so far. So I'll update, since you talked about three dumb games, I'll talk about my uh, weight loss. I weighed myself tonight. I'm down another two pounds for the week. Uh, so it's 20 total since January 1st. Um, <clears throat> so my goal is probably to lose another, not that this will make me skinny, but this is just where I want to get, uh, probably another 20 pounds. So uh, that means I have to stop gaming for at least another three months are you going to be okay with that yeah no that'd be great because the time building up to e3 no one cares about video game stuff so <laughs> good timing the fart button as a, i hit as the fart always. button <laughs> i like that game with the fart button <laughs> yeah as all uh as always i mean i've been i kind of been gaming uh, it's the same story i'll boot stuff up like oh i'm disappointed i tried to play uh um, Monster Hunter, and I missed out on getting the freaking Aloy. Didn't they just costume. relaunch it, or was that the relaunch and now it's over? I thought they re it's over. Oh, okay. And I didn't. I was one piece short. I had to get the fire gem or whatever. And so I was like, "Oh, I'll just you know." I'll, I was off Friday. I was like, "I'll play a little bit." And I jumped in. And I started looking for the event, and it wasn't there. I was like, "Great." So it's over. I'm gonna imagine they're gonna bring it back. At some point, yeah, I hope. I think so. Because I'd, I'd like to unlock her costume, even if that's the last thing I do in that game. Because I am pretty over it. Like, I don't play it just for fun. I was only playing it to unlock that costume. Um, other than that, the only thing I would talk about that I just want to say I think is really cool, uh, and I know some of the other Xbox One X owners have been enjoying this as well. I know Dan Phillips was... He actually <clears throat> beat Fable. Um, but... Microsoft's been doing a really good job of bringing back not only their old Xbox 360 games to um, the Xbox One, but now they're they're up-resing them to 4K. And games like Fable, Crackdown, Forza Horizon, uh, there was another one I'm forgetting, but they all look really, really good in 4K. Like it, it, of course, it's still a 360 game, but it's so crisp and clear. Well, and clear. it's Fable Anniversary, right? It's not, of course, the original yeah. Xbox yeah. Fable. So it already looked improved, which is what I played. When I beat Fable Anniversary a month ago, I was playing it without the 4K, and it looked decent. It wasn't bad. 
But when I jump back in just to see what the 4K looked like, it's a it's a big difference. It's not like this little. I mean, of course, it's not standard definition to high definition difference, but it's pretty close. Like you'll tell that you can tell the difference. It's really cool. So I'm loving the fact that they're doing that. I hope they keep doing that with more and more games. Um, I I have to say so far, even though I love my you know my PC, the Xbox One X has been worth it. They've really been doing a good job of getting a lot of these games to run as close to 4K and some of the older games are getting them at native 4K so it's it's been pretty cool. Nice. But that's about that's all you're going to get for me. I don't think I've played anything else. Okay. Besides Rocket League. But that's something, right? If yeah, it, I guess. If you got to hang on by a thread with Rocket League, at least that's something. Well, I still want you to play Bloodborne, so I know we made an agreement I have to play a game, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I need you just to go ahead and play Bloodborne. I re-downloaded it, and okay. it's ready to go in anticipation that you would text me and be like, I'm playing a game, you idiot. Start Bloodborne. I was waiting for something. Fine. I'll just text you I'm playing a game. Doesn't mean I'm going to play a game. No, I have to, I have I have to be able to, to see lie. it on PlayStation Activities. I have to be able to look in there and see that you're playing a game. Really? Yep. You're going to stalk me? Then I'm going to block or, you. Or on me. Xbox. One, Xbox is fine, too. I need to be able to see one. Blocking one you on both of them. Speaking you're, of which, you know. I did sign up for Game Pass, so I'm actually just did that today. I haven't even fired it up yet. I just bought it. Excuse me, just signed up for it. So I need to uh, to get in there and start figuring out what to download first and start playing. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I downloaded Halo Wars 2. Uh Super Lucky's Tale. I played Super Lucky's Tale for about ten minutes and was like, "It's not terrible, but it's a, I'm it's not a kids game, right?" I mean, yeah. yeah. It does. It doesn't feel. It, I think the biggest issue I had with it, I thought it played pretty good and it looks okay, but um, when you get used to Super Mario Odyssey and how you have complete control of the camera and you can just move around the world, Super Lucky's Tale they kind of block you with the camera. Like you can move s some of the ways and then it just stops. Like there's a wall there and I'm like, what are you doing? Yep. So that kind of annoyed me. Yep. Yep. That'll happen. Yeah. So I'm excited yep. to dive into that. Hopefully um, next week when we talk, the goal is to have a bunch of sea of thieves thoughts for you guys. Sea of thieves of course coming out this week. And uh, my goal is to get some time in that game. I know we talked about how far cry five might be when you dive back in, but between my, I think, myself and a few others, I think we've got you convinced to give Sea of Thieves a shot, sounds like. so. Yeah, and I'm off this week, so I think Sea of Thieves will be a game I, uh, I'll i at least give it a fair shot. Um, I'm also considering Nino Kuni 2. Um, I'm a little scared to buy it. I wouldn't have been scared to buy it if I was gaming, because I really, really like the first one. I just don't want to buy it like I bought Kingdom Come and then be like, well, I... Paid sixty dollars yeah. for nothing, yeah. but I'm kind of hoping that um, that might be one of the games that I get excited for. I think that comes out on the 23rd, which is next Friday. So I'm off yeah. all next week. So I'll have plenty of time to game. So I'll I'll probably be on Sea of Thieves Monday night. Okay, early Tuesday morning. Nice. All right, so that is something big that's coming out this week. Um, but speaking of stuff that's coming up, we. Do have a few news items I wanted to cover. Um, CD Projekt Red tweeted out a tease of some kind, of, some sort of Witcher announcements coming out, and I I saw someone in our group posted this, and my response to it was basically, if it's about more Witcher Three DLC is coming out, that's amazing. If it's about Witcher mm -hmm. Four is in development and they're confirming that, I that's amazing. If it's going to be about, yeah. even if it's about Gwent the card game coming to mobile or switch or something. Okay. All right. That's, that's good news. But if it's going to be about him being in soul caliber, I don't care. Well, they can really, they confirmed that Geralt of Rivia is a playable character in soul caliber six. They also, well, and he, the non gamer is super excited. <laughs> I'm really excited for soul caliber six. I just don't, I care. love that franchise. Yeah. And, I am itching to play a new Soul Calibur game, and the fact that they're going to bring probably one of my favorite characters of all gaming into this world, and he's going to have like all his powers from like the little gameplay clip they did of him. He was using his special abilities, so I was like, that's pretty cool. Yep. We'll see how they, they work those in and how they do it. Um, but yeah, yep. I thought it looked really, really cool, and I can't wait. For so well, listen, I, I don't want to rain on your parade since you're finally excited about something gaming related. But um, 
so I'll, I'll go along with it. This is great. This is awesome news. This is going to be an amazing game. Uh, a stage based on the Witcher series. For you guys that don't know, Tim knows. I texted him earlier. I'm having a mental breakdown. So he has to like like support me because he's afraid I'm going to I'm going to fall apart on the show. Hey, if, so he's if, fake it'll, if it'll cheer you up, excited. if it'll cheer you up, I will start. I will play Bloodborne tonight. I will. That's my pledge to you. I'll play some Bloodborne tonight. If that'll. How far did you get into that? Didn't you beat the first boss? I didn't even get to the first real boss. Oh, you're a noob. <laughs> well, if you if I'm up because I'm I'm gonna probably stay up late tonight. We can co op right. something. We can pl- co op Bloodborne. We can co op whatever. Right. But we'll play something. So this Soul Calibur Six news doesn't just include Geralt as a as a as a character. They're also going to have a stage from the Witcher series. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to cool. say this. Kyra Moran. It's one of the main locations in uh, the Witcher series. Will be available mm-hmm. as an arena. Um, of course, he's going to keep his signature fighting style, which is very cool. So he's going to fight like a Witcher, even though it's in Soul Calibur. Um, he'll u- utilize a combination of his swordplay, his potions, and combat magic, which are all keys to him being a Witcher. The potions, of course, are also a big part of that if you've played that game. So... Very cool. They even have his English voice actor who's going to be doing his voice for that game. So it's really going to feel yeah. like an authentic edition. That is genuinely cool, even though I don't care about fighting games typically. So no release date still, though, for Soul Calibur VI, just that it's supposed to be coming this year. It's probably going to be a fall oh, game. So I do want to ask, going back to Nino Cooney 2, if I do buy it, which is I'm probably going to buy it, um, I was thinking about getting it on PC. Are you interested at all that I, it would be worth me going digital PS4, or should I just stick with my original plan of PC if I buy it? I want our listeners to think that I'm interested, so I they think I have a wide variety of interests, and I'll probably play it. So you're it. not interested. No, Sounds you don't have good. to get it on PS4. I won't. I don't have time for it, because okay. Far Cry 5 and then God of War, there's too many... <clears> too many. <throat> That's true. That's games. another reason why I'm a little scared to commit to it, because I'm like, are you really going to Yeah, if I'm being it? realistic, it's just, <laughs> there's really no windows of time between between the stuff that's coming out and then even the stuff in the summer that's coming out. I just don't have time. So, Okay. Um, another big piece of news, it was leaked early, so Square Enix went ahead and completely revealed that Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the next official installment in the Tomb Raider series, is coming out on September 14th this year. So this game, pretty much done, apparently, if it's coming out in just five or six yeah. months. So uh, that's pretty good news if you like that series. I really do. Of course, the movie just came out to, it looked like mediocre reviews, although I've had a few people that have seen it that have told me directly, whether it's on Facebook or in person, that this is actually a really good movie. So, or at least a solid movie. I've heard, I've heard from even a couple saying that this is I, one of the I best. I heard it was a good action movie, yeah. not a good story. But honestly, I haven't played a Tomb Raider game that had a great story. Yeah. I'm not saying They're all good. the, the They're two all I played yeah. were terrible, right. but I played them for the action. Exactly. Same thing with Uncharted. I wouldn't say the Uncharted games really have great stories i think they have good characters and good action yeah so yeah i'm excited for that too but anyway the game uh is coming out on ps4 xbox one and pc all at once there will be no timed exclusivity this time around so okay no one should get upset for that one so yeah that'll nobody's, definitely nobody's be a cry. that'll be a purchase for this fall I'm looking forward to that um another announcement that was just um revealed is the crew 2 which i think at this past e3 was revealed Looks like a very mm-hmm. extreme sport style game. If you guys haven't seen it, there was lots of like parachuting and that kind of stuff. It was pretty crazy. And of course, in addition to lots and lots and lots of driving, that release is happening on June 29th. So right after E3, you'll have something to play this summer if you're big into racing games. And specifically, if you liked the crew but thought they fell short in a few areas, <clears throat> they are apparently trying to address a lot of that with the crew too. So go check that out. Okay. All right, some sad news for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s. uh, Toys R Us is closing all of its stores. If if you get over there now, you might be able to get some clearance stuff, although it might be too late. Um, They might be, the shelves might be empty. But anyway, Toys R Us is closing all of its stores. I think there's like 800 or so that are, that that they're closing down. So I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm surprised Toys R Us survived as long as they did with with competition like Amazon out there. But um, so long, Toys R Us. It's been... It's been real. Their biggest problem was they weren't uh, they weren't competitive in pricing. Like they they were totally. always just off. Yeah, they didn't. It was like they didn't have anybody who knew anything. They were just like, well, let's just price it this. Yeah, exactly. So, so the prices off. were always <clears throat> pretty much higher than everywhere else, if not the same as everywhere else. You never really got an amazing deal there. 
The other, mm-hmm. the other problem was they never really were the exclusive location for a thing. It was never really like this is the place you if if you want to get, you know, fill in the blank. Let's say Amiibos, for example. Toys R Us was one of many locations that would have those things. So they were never like the special mm-hmm. location for stuff. So yeah. I think they their their pricing was the biggest issue, and then of course they weren't really the go to place for anything specifically, other than it was fun for kids. Like bringing our kids there was fun, but. Anyway, Toys R Us is going away. I don't know if that includes Babies R Us. Not sure if those are directly tied together. I know they're part of the same brand. I just don't know if they're closing those stores too. Yeah. Who knows? All right. Here's some amazing news. Far Cry 5 will have microtransactions. Thank you, Ubisoft. So you will be able to buy all kinds of stuff in this game. They said, for the most part, if you're familiar with what Assassin's Creed Origins had going on, it's going to be similar. So... If that's the case, from my experience, I can confirm this is not game breaking. It doesn't. Nope. It doesn't get in the way of enjoyment of the game. It simply gives you the opportunity, if you want to, to just load up on tons of resources and you know buy some extra weapons. And if you want to kind of fast forward through the game, you can pay extra money to do that. I think that's dumb. Some people like that. It's fine. I'm going to ignore it, like I do all the other microtransactions out there. Well, and the other thing, and they'll probably do it in this one, that uh, Ubisoft usually does, is <clears throat> they have their separate store that you can buy stuff with real money, and then while you're playing the game, they'll give you credit for that real store so you can go in there and buy something with in-game currency. And so, while you can ignore the store with your real money, you could actually use that in-game credit Again, they did this in previous games like Assassin's Creed and what was the last major one I played? Oh, Assassin's Creed Origin. Um, but they've also done it in some uh, some of their other Ubisoft games. <clears throat> you just go in there and use it to buy resources or whatever. They don't give you a lot of money. Yeah. It's just kind of a tease. It's and... usually like it's kind of the same thing that um, Shadow of War did where they give you the ability yeah. to make a couple purchases and then you open up that loot chest or whatever and you're like, wow, there's some good stuff in here. The idea is mm-hmm. to just give you a little taste and hope you get hooked, basically. It, but the cool thing nice. about that is if you're already going in with the stance of, I'm not going to spend money, you're still getting something yeah, free. Yeah, you, so. you get a little bonus, right? I'm, that's yep. exactly how I treat it. So um, also, they did it. They did confirm that the campaign, single-player campaign, of course, will be fully playable offline. They are not going to require you to have an online connection to play the game, cool. um, unless, of course, you want to play co-op or whatever you have to be online but yeah so that's those are nice I, th- I feel like ubisoft is treading carefully into this space watch as they watch their compatriots over at ea really fumble the ball with with battlefront 2 uh in ter- at least in terms of microtransactions and stuff like that i think they are still treading carefully and I, for the most part i still admire what how ubisoft handles all this stuff um all right this one's especially for derek he he can't wait for this uh the publisher of stardew valley yeah. chucklefish They've announced yeah, uh, the name for their mysterious game that they had previously released some some scre- so mysterious some screenshots for, and they had just described it as a Harry Potter like game with some Stardew elements as well. Well, now that the official title is Witchbrook, it's where players assume the role of a student at a magic school. In addition to the main story, they'll it'll feature some dating sim elements, ooh, mm. and some other activities for players to do. Uh, Chucklefish says the game's combat system was inspired by two-dimensional Legend of Zelda games, except that players wield magic spells instead of a sword and shield. No release date announced. Right now, PC is the only platform being talked about. I'm sure it will come other places. So there you go. If you like Stardew Valley like I did, and I have to kind of fight through the comments from my co-host to even tell you that, uh, Stardew is a fun game. Uh, Witchbrook, Witchbrook I'm, I'm interested in, but it sounds like it's a long way away, right, way off. So. All right. Lastly, speaking of Monster Hunter World earlier in our conversation, the first free update for Monster Hunter World is on the way. I believe it's coming out March 22nd. So coming out this week, I think. Um, on a Thursday? Maybe I got that date wrong. I think it's this week. Maybe it's though. the 20th? I think it's this week. If it's it the could 20th, be... it will be on a Tuesday. It's either the 20th or... Yeah, some, okay. some, it could be 23rd. I, I can't remember. But it, I'm pretty sure it's this week. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure the date is this week. Uh, what they're doing is they're introducing a main new monster called, I don't know how to say this, Devilijo? Devil, Devilijo? I don't know how to say that. Um, he apparently is from the original series, you know, and other entries in the series. He's a, mm-hmm. a, a crowd favorite monster, I suppose. And, of course, there will be accompanying gear to craft, 
Plus, there's a bunch of other changes um, and additions. Go check out. There's a good article on games, uh, GameSpot.com that really breaks down all the changes. It does include improvements and tweaks to pretty much every weapon. Um, and there's a few other things they're doing in this update. So go check that out, including little things. Like if you're playing online and you're trying to loot the main, um, the main creature you just took down, players could grief each other by hitting each other, which takes off no health, just like in the regular game, but it interrupts your animation whatever you were doing and if, mm -hmm. as soon as the mission's over they were players were doing that whole thing where they're just trolling each other by hitting the other characters so they couldn't loot the monster at all stuff, stuff like that which is which is stupid. so they they it took care to they're me. taking care of that <clears throat> they're also in addition this happened to me a few times as soon as the mission is over and you're getting the victory screen and you want to just loot stuff there's been times when like the basil guys monster had just landed and starts hitting me with bombs as i'm trying to loot this thing and I can't loot it because it keeps knocking me around. Um, that's happened to me more than once. So they're going to fix it to where pretty much nothing can touch you. Once a mission's complete and you're just there to loot a few things before your timer runs out, it won't interrupt you. I've so. had it happen a couple times where the timer... It, you know how it does the animation? Like, oh, you beat the monster, blah, blah, blah. And it's supposed to give you 60 seconds to loot. Yeah. It will like do the animation and it gives you ten seconds. I don't even get the loot. Like it'll just end game. I'm like, what? The only time what that the happens to me on? is if it's a, like a collection mission of some kind, or a or a calling mission. Like if I'm just trying to call Maybe. like the smaller monsters, it'll do that. No, this was we would beat a we would defeat like a big monster and Jeez. people were looting and it would go through the animation. That sucks. And then it would just end the mission. I'm like, I didn't get to loot it, you freaking game. Yeah, because it's pretty much every time you loot, it's pretty much a roll of the dice. Will I get the more valuable piece of loot from this monster or not? That's, yeah. That sucks. So anyway, third Game's major terrible. update rolling out, I believe, this week for Monster Hunter World. I have not played that since I started Dishonored 2. I had a feeling that would be the case. So uh, I'll probably go back, though, and check out this this new monster because so far it's my favorite game of the year. So I want to give it another go with the new, the new free content, which is great. Yep. All right, so we're going to wrap things up tonight. By sharing the next five of our top 25 games of all time, we'll also give you a quick recap of last time. Spoiler alert, okay. if you didn't listen to last week's episode, go back and listen to the last 20 minutes or so because we give explanations for each pick. And uh, But for right now, we'll just give you a quick recap of numbers. Just listen to our show. We're funny. Yeah, we're awesome. Like we're entertaining. 25 through 21 for me. Oops, I had it on my phone. Where did it go? Uh, 25 was Telltale's The Walking Dead, specifically season one. 24, that one. 24 was Advanced Wars. 23, Trash. I picked Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay. 22 was Grand Theft Auto V. And okay. 21 was ActRaiser. Those are my... That was the one that was the huge trash. Yeah, I have. I thought you had more trash than that. In every in every five trash. that I select, I'm trying to make sure there's at least one that makes you upset. So we'll see if I succeed in that. <laughs> All right, and what were your first five that you went through, 25 to 21? Uh... I thought I booted Death Row. Maybe I didn't. Death Row was 25. Twisted Metal was 24. Borderlands 2 was 23. Borderlands was 22. And Mortal Kombat 9 was 21. Okay. So now we are on to numbers 20, and we'll work our way up to 16 for this week. And then, actually, we're going to take a break next week and just talk Sea of Thieves and Xbox Game Pass. Next week will be kind of an Xbox-centric episode. Uh, the week after that will be mostly Far Cry 5 talk. And then we'll get back to our countdown the week after that. So this is all you're going to get for the next couple weeks. Um, so enjoy. It sounded threatening for some reason. All right. Anyway, um, number <laughs> number 20. This time I'll go. So you get from us. I'll, I'll go first and we'll go back and forth here. I'll start with number 20 for me. Is Final Fantasy IX is my 20th favorite game of all time. Final Fantasy IX is, I think, one of PlayStation 1's best games of all time. Uh, let alone best RPGs. I think it's a fantastic entry to the series. For a while there, it went unappreciated, but now with all the re-releases it's gotten, I feel like it's gotten some love again, and people have recognized that this is a really solid game. Um, they tell a great story. The characters are really great. Um, the initial character you use, a little black mage, uh, Vivi, one of the most adorable mm -hmm. little characters to start with, very lovable, very um, kind of innocent and is thrown into this big adventure that turns out to have a much darker core to it than you realize. Um, again, very colorful cast of characters. The, the battle system is really fun. Um, the summons look amazing. Some of the best graphics you'll see on the PS1. Um, 
this is one that I don't want to see remade, but I wouldn't mind seeing a nice remaster um, come out for something. I wouldn't mind seeing that, but I don't want to see them. I think you're in good hands with Square. Their their mission is to remaster and re-release everything I, 50 billion I know. times. I, know. I just don't want them to try to remake it. Like this Final Fantasy VII thing, even though I was excited when they first announced this a couple years back, I kind of don't want them to even release it now. I just feel like it's getting silly. So I, I hope they don't do that to Final Fantasy IX, but anyway... Well, I'm I'm still excited for Final Fantasy. I, I don't know. I, well, I'll I'll be excited. I don't know. Once I like really see it, we'll see. I, <clears throat> I have a feeling when they finally release it, probably early next year, the chapter one is just gonna be the opening city missions up until the end of that, and then they're gonna say, okay, part two to be revealed soon. I think that game's gonna take like seven total years to release the entire thing. It's gonna be horrible. And and it also it looks like it's gonna play, and they may change it from the last time I saw like it. Like fifteen, but uh. Yeah, which I really, I'm okay really with that. love Final okay Fantasy. That, we'll see. But Final Fantasy IX, amazing game. Highly recommend it. Holds up great. I, if you're going to play it, I recommend if you've got a Vita or PSP especially, get it as a PS1 classic and play it on the go. It looks great on those little screens. Um, and if you have a PS1 or PS2, of course, just grab the disc and play it that way. It works, works great on that too. So Final Fantasy IX is number 20. What do you got at your number 20 spot? Uh, I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat 2. This is a, a game that probably for <clears throat> i don't know 15 years was probably in my top 5 i'm only moving it that far down because there's just so many great games that have come out over generations and when i go back and play mortal kombat 2 it's it's definitely dated it's not a great fighter as far as uh, the fighting mechanics but the thing that i always loved about mortal kombat 2 well just mortal kombat franchise in general is I love the amount of secrets they have. Uh, I love the violence, and I just love the characters. And Mortal Kombat 2 did it better than any Mortal Kombat game when you consider what it went from with Mortal Kombat to Mortal Kombat 2. They they almost doubled the amount of fighters. They doubled the fatality number. They added friendships, babyalities, all these secrets. There was a secret fatality. Oh, babyalities, for... I remember that. Jeez. Yeah. Or is it Babe Alley? Whatever it was. Yeah, I remember that. And the funny thing is, and I may have shared this on the podcast before, but uh, you know, I was a, I was a teenager when this game came out, and I was obsessed with it, and I used to play it all the time with my friends, and some of them were over it, thought it was annoying. Other people joined in, played a, played a, a lot with me, and one of the things that interested all of us is there was a rumor that there was nudalities. And we all wanted to see Sonya get naked. <laughs> we wanted to figure out a way to get her. Because she's in the game, but not in the game. And we were trying to figure out if there was a way. Because there was a rumor yeah. that you could like go over to her character that's like chained up. And just like pull her top off or something like that. Um, it sounds like something <clears throat> yes. the middle schoolers would be scrambling to find. Yeah. yeah. But that game was a phenomenal game. I love it. Uh, I still have a lot of nostalgia for it. I would love... I don't know if they need... I kind of probably feel the same way as you um i would love to see them maybe remaster it clean it up a little bit but then leave it alone. um yeah but just let it be what it is because yeah. i feel like all the mortal comments that are coming out now they're doing such a great job with it that i don't think they could redo mortal Kombat 2 to be better than what they're releasing now yeah. so i think if they just left it alone but maybe cleaned it up i would love to see that but let me ask you this mortal Kombat if, 2. if nintendo announces a virtual console and they put out mortal mm -hmm. Kombat 2 on that would you buy it and play on the switch well, of course yeah i always buy mortal Kombat 2 i probably own it like 80 billion times what system did you I play have... it on originally what was your system of choice uh i think i started with uh, Sega Genesis, and then I bought it on the, S the SNES. The uh, SNES. That, doesn't that up? No, the SNES. The S doesn't that offend people? NES. Gosh, it's not the SNES. All right, good pick. Mortal Kombat 2. I had a feeling that was gonna make make your list as well because we've talked about that before for you. All right, number nineteen for me is a very recent game, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So this is my okay. spoiler alert. This is my only Mario Kart entry on the list. Here's why. Um, Sorry for all of you who are Mario Kart purists. I think they're all pretty similar. And so if mm -hmm. I, and this is where I would put my favorite Mario Kart entry. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is my favorite of all of them. It used to be Mario 64. I liked that one a lot. I thought it was the best one. And then it became Mario Kart Wii. I'm sorry. So Mario Kart 64 and then Mario Kart Wii. 
Loved that one. I thought it was one of the Wii's best games. It was super fun. They added a whole bunch mm-hmm. of really cool stuff to that. Um, never had a Wii U, obviously. But I did like the 3DS Mario Kart 7. I thought that was a great entry as well. So that was my favorite for a little bit. And now that I have a Switch and they released Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it is gorgeous. It plays perfectly. I mean, as far as kart racers go, no game mm-hmm. even comes close. It just It's so fun. But it's also pick up and play for family and friends to, to play. There's tons of characters, lots of stuff to unlock. It's very challenging because now you can do 200cc and all the mirror courses and things like that. And lots of online options. It's one of the few Switch games that has a pretty robust offering for online stuff in terms of time trials or battle mode, all that stuff. So, so much fun stuff to do in, in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think it's the best entry in a fantastic franchise. That's my number 19 pick. And if you're going to play it, I highly recommend playing it on Switch. Even though it is out on Wii U, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the way to go on the Switch. So, there's my number 19. All right. Good pick. Um <clears throat> Number 19 is the start of Bioware Fest. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go with Dragon Age Origins. Okay. Uh, this, is, uh, an, this is an amazing game. Um, I know I've shared the story about how I bought this game. I was actually unemployed and traded in a bunch of games. To, I had to have this game. And it totally blew me away. I've played multiple playthroughs of it. it it's not an attractive game. Even on PC, it's not pretty. Um, but the story, the characters, the world, the, the gameplay, everything else that Bioware in the past, I wouldn't say they are really well known for it anymore, but in the past, what they were known for, they nailed in this game. Um, so it's definitely, I highly recommend. So like the dialogue, right? The selections you get to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The choices matter. Um, there's just some good plot twists too in it. So yeah, I wouldn't say the story's great. It's kind of the, your typical Bioware story of something terrible is happening. It's going to destroy the whole either universe or world, um, and you've got to stop it. But it's all the little choices that you have to make with characters and betrayal and all that stuff that that makes it great. Okay, nice. I knew there was going to be some Bioware games, and I know that's not your last one either. I haven't looked at your list, by the way, so I don't know. So we're just hearing these from each other for the first time. But uh, I, I knew Bioware was going to be prevalent on your list. They'll be there. They'll be there for yeah, a while. Yeah, fair enough. All right, for me, number eighteen is similar to last time around when I picked Advance Wars at number twenty-four. This is going to be um, the representative for this franchise because so many of them are so similar, and that is Fire Emblem Awakening. So I love the Fire Emblem series. I got hooked on it with the Game Boy Advance, where I played Fire Emblem and then Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones. Uh, And then, of course, with the DS with um, Shadow Dragon, which I think was meant to be Fire Emblem DS, and they switched it to SD to be Shadow Dragon. Mm -hmm. That was a great game. Um, I played the ones from the GameCube. There's two. Oh, no, one on the GameCube, one on the Wii, Radiant Dawn, and or whatever. I forget what they're all called. Who cares? They're all really good. This one, Fire Emblem Awakening took the series and just exploded it into this massive experience where now you're Mm -hmm. matching up characters and it's not, doesn't feel like a dating sim, but there are ways that you can get them to fall in love with each other by battling beside each other and building a relationship. Then as time passes, they have kids who will then come and fight in your army and they'll take some of their characteristics and their abilities that you've you've earned and they'll combine into some sort of class. And there's tons of um, customization it's a great it's it's one of my favorite grid based battle systems ever created where swords beat axes axes beat spears spears beat swords and then of mm-hmm. course they throw in archery and they throw in um, magic and all sorts of other things um, armored characters characters on horseback um, there's ballistas there's monsters you have to fight sometimes it's really creative it's really fun and the characters are so entertaining they're very very good some of them specifically are written really well um, some are just kind of cheesy, standard, whatever, but some of them are written really well, and I just think it's such a great game. I think Fire Emblem Awakening is the best in the series, as much as I do love, um, uh, not Echoes, Fates. I do love Fates, but I think Awakening is the better game, because Fates just kind of copies a lot of the stuff that's there. So, Fire Emblem Awakening, yeah, Awakening is amazing better. game, yeah. and it's not that old of a game. It holds up amazingly, of course. Highly recommend it. It's it's totally, until you've got one on the Switch, I recommend grabbing a 2 or 3 DS uh, and playing it. Bring Awakening to the Switch. Oh, please, yeah. Bring Awakening and Fates to the Switch. And right. give the characters feet, please. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't disagree with that either. So there you go. That's number 18 for me. What about for you? Uh, we're going Bioware again. 
and we're gonna go with Jade Empire. Uh, this is another one that uh, I don't know. I just freaking love it. Um, it it the combat's a little bit different than some of the other stuff they've done. It's a little bit faster pace, uh, which I actually enjoyed. Again, another story with to me good plot twists. Again, you got to remember I played this game when I was younger, so. Um, if you played it now, you'd be like, I've seen all this before, but back then I don't really feel like a lot of games were really doing what they were doing. Um, great characters, um, great combat, great world. It's a really, really good martial arts RPG, something you don't see a lot. Um, so I think it's a unique experience and I would love a sequel to Jade Empire. And I, this is another one where if they remastered it, I'd totally be okay if they're like, we're never doing another Jade Empire, but here's the original 4K, 60 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. I would absolutely love now, that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, so, but no isn't Jade Empire the only Bioware series that has not been revisited in any way? The rest of them, yeah. the rest of their major yeah. franchises all have sequels and remasters of some kind, right? So... Yeah, yeah, that that one is it, other than like an iPad or iPhone release that they put out. Other than that, they haven't really revisited this one. So, yeah, I think it'd be great if they made even if they decided we're going to go Jade Empire 2 and, and create that. That'd be that'd be awesome. Yep. All right. We're up to number 17 here for me. Number 17 is another Super Nintendo. Great. Um, still by far my favorite fighting game of all time. Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It is I, so I was a Street Fighter kid. You were a Mortal Kombat kid. Um, but those were kind of the glory days of, of uh, fighting games. When they moved from arcades, which I wasn't always allowed to go to as a young kid. My parents didn't like the type of shady characters that hung out there, I guess. Uh, but when yeah. we had home console versions of these games, they took one look at Mortal Kombat. And they took one look at Street Fighter. And Street Fighter was the more cartoony, less bloody one. That one they approved of. So... I got Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I had never played the other ones before. I didn't know that there was a regular Street Fighter 2, let alone Street Fighter 1. This game is so great. It's got a great cast of characters with very simple and yet um, like it's easy, easy to, to play, difficult to master type of uh, fighting. Yeah. Of course, you can ramp up the difficulty, the turbo mode, where it really truly goes into super speed mode, and it plays so smoothly. It plays so cleanly. Um, Street Fighter 2 uh, Turbo was an amazing experience. And I, I have liked some of the re-release stuff they've done for it. I know they even had it out for Switch. I did not grab that one um, because I, I just felt like the old school experience. I did too high priced. It was too high priced. The if, they were, if it were cheaper, I might have bought it. I did buy Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the virtual console on the Wii. And I used the Wii mm -hmm. virtual console old school controller, which was very Super Nintendo-like. And it was like Going back in time. It was perfect. Still plays great. I still remember a lot of the combos. Ken was my guy. He was the one that I used most of the time. But I also liked guys like Blanca and and E Honda and boy. I, I love that game. So Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Surprise, surprise. It's my only fighting game on my list, but I do love it. It's number 17 for me. I was a big fan of that. Well, I was actually a big fan of I believe it was a special champion edition, and that included like um all the fighters, like some new ones. Yeah, it had like T Hawk and Cammy and a few others jumped in. Yeah, so that was actually my favorite. I used to play that one all the time. Of course, again, Mortal Kombat is my preferred franchise, but I did love Street Fighter. Still love Street Fighter. Um, I played Street Fighter 4. In fact, I have. I don't think that you guys will be able to see it. I have scars on my hand. This is caused by Street Fighter 4 and a bad temper. All right, what happened? Okay, so um, I had an old school, like, big screen TV. It wasn't a high def. This was, I think, before it, or they were just coming out. Um, and it was already kind of busted up. And I was playing Street Fighter 4. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I got really, really pissed. So, obviously, I lost. And I ended up punching my TV, like, multiple times. And when I was done punching it, I looked down, and I had, like, shards of the plastic it wasn't glass like plastic implanted oh, in my hand dude. so my front of my hand is all i'm mean, you can't really see it but it's all jacked up Jeez, but no temper problems there you're good you're fine no i'm good i'm good now <laughs> all right what's your number 17 uh 
we're going Bioware again. We're going to go Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, this was actually my game of the year, I believe, 2014. Um, I remember before this game released, I used to just sit sit on YouTube and watch videos of this game because I couldn't wait. I couldn't stand waiting for this game to release. I was so excited for it. It lived up to my hype. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, I think it's a great game. I wouldn't say um, it's Bioware's greatest work, but I still think it's an amazing game that gets. It got a lot. Of, got a, a lot of positive reception because it won a lot of Game of the Year awards. But it seems like a lot of players actually hate it more than media, which is weird. That I, I see so many people that say, and I know you're one of them that say it's boring. And it wasn't. It wasn't that fun to play. I found it to be very fun to play. Um, sure, there are some aspects of it that can be kind of boring, but there's a lot of. It was a good mixture of fast com, uh, fast combat, and strategy. They even had like a strategy camera that would lift up, and you could actually plan out your moves, and then you could then go back into the and fast they action that, like, so I, right away. Yeah, right as soon as the game yeah. starts. So really good game, um, good story. It ended up having a great story. Is that one that you've um, replayed, even, right? You've played that one a couple times through. I've played it like one and a half times. Okay. I got pretty far. I still need to finish it off. But I did all the DLC, which the DLC, some of it, not all of it. But there's one particular DLC that actually finishes off the game. Like, it gives you another ending that's really good. Um, so, I don't know. Play it. It's a great game. I love it. Um, one of the best. And it's on sale all the time for like seven or eight bucks for like the game of the year edition, which comes with everything. It's definitely worth it. Nice. Plus, it's one that you gifted to me, I believe, as well. Yeah, and I'm sure you played well, it. Well, all right. Let me ask you right now, in front of the entire the world is watching. All right, the world. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake. You're gonna me. ask me. Make no mistake if about I it. want you. If the whole world, you want you want to know if I want you to play Inquisitions or Bloodborne. Yep, you got to pick which one. <laughs> which one am I playing? Ah, uh, shit. I see. I think you would enjoy Inquisitions more. Pick one. But Bloodborne is the better game, so I'm going to go Bloodborne. And, and what's my commitment level here? Do I need to play a certain amount of it? Am I allowed to back out if I can confirm I've put them out? This is... I, all right, so with Bloodborne, I think you should play until you beat Father Gascon. Okay. So that should be about two bosses because you sh should fight the first optional boss first. Okay. Um, and then I think for Dragon Age Inquisitions, you should definitely get out of the first area. Now you can technically be in the first area for like forty hours, but you really I mean, Witcher Three is kind of the same way, right? That opening area, there's yeah. tons to do. But. Yeah, it's really big, and there's a ton of stuff to do, but you don't need to do that. You can move on. Okay. So yeah. But which one? Which Those one am I doing? Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Okay. All right. I'm gonna see if I can get to Father. Yeah. Good luck Whatever. with Father. Father ca cast. Cast, whatever it's called. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Number 16. And this is our last one for this week, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Number 16. Hang on. I lost my list here. There it is. Oh, yeah. So 17 of Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Number 16, God of War on the PS2. God of War game. is... Boy, that, that game blew my mind. I had never played anything like it when I fired it up on the PS2. It was absolutely epic. Like, the scope of this game was insane. And if I remember correctly, I might be confusing this with God of War 2, so con so forgive me if I am. But I, if I remember correctly, you start this one on a ship, and the Hydra attacks you. And you start attacking all... You have to fight all the different heads of the Hydra that's coming out of the sea. And then, of course, it finishes off... Sorry for spoiling it. But it finishes off by you, you have to destroy the masts of the ship in a certain way, or you know, I don't know if you have to, but they get destroyed in a certain way where they become uh, these giant spikes, and then you use your your chain swords to hook onto the hydra, and then of course by rotating or tapping the button real fast, you pull its head down onto the spike to to kill it. It's super epic. It's one of those moments that you just have this huge adrenaline mm -hmm. rush, and I remember after that first moment going, "What did I just do? Like, what is this game? I had never played anything like it." And the entire game has those moments from start all the way to finish. It's got an epic finish, uh, but there's it kind of leaves you hanging, of course, and picks up with God of War 2, and, the, and the, the series continues. To me, this this changed the way that I looked at action games, and so many games since then have copied it. Things like Darksiders. Uh, even as I'm playing Bayonetta, there's moments where I see little glimpses of God of War in addition to stuff like Devil May Cry, of course. But 
Um, God of War set, set a new standard, I think, for action games. And it was one of my favorite experiences. I do love um, games about mythology, both Roman and Norse and Greek. I think it's all fascinating. Um, of course, this being primarily Greek mythology is very uh, entertaining, a really cool take on you know, gods and demigods and humanity and just very interesting, very entertaining, um, very bloody. So a little disturbing in that realm, but boy, oh boy, what a game. And I got to be honest, I'm very excited to revisit or to jump back into this franchise next month with the new God of War. So that's my number 16. Yeah, good pick. I don't think you've pissed me off at all tonight. That's that's a good thing. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to stick with the same theme. And that's where we're going to go with Bioware's Mass Effect 2. Wait, hang on. Might... Before you talk about Mass <clears throat> Effect 2, has this been four out of five have been Bioware games tonight for you? Yeah, the only one that wasn't was Mortal Kombat 2. So you got Origins, Jade Empire, Inquisition, and now Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2. 2. All right, let's hear it. All right, so for many people, they're going to be like, why is Mass Effect 2... Because I'll tell you right now, Mass Effect 2 is not the only Mass Effect game on there. Why is it the first one to show up when it's considered the best one? Because it's the least favorite for me, but I still absolutely loved it. Oh, In fact, boy. I replayed it, I think, last year. I replayed like Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, and got through halfway of Mass Effect 3. Um, and I actually really enjoyed Mass Effect 2 a lot more playing it later on when I'm I would consider better at video games. Um, I do like how epic the ending is. I won't spoil it, but the just the the last mission, how much uh, I don't know. There's just how much stress they put you under to get everybody to survive and things like that. Um, but the the Mass Effect to the gameplay. If you like action games compared to RPG, it was a huge improvement over the first one. The story was solid. I do have some issues with the story just because it's like, oh, the the entire universe is in uh, in jeopardy. So what what should we go do? A bunch of side missions so these people like you a little bit better. I I always found that to be stupid. That's why Mass Effect Two was knocked down for me. But overall, really, really good game. One of my favorite franchises of all time is Mass Effect. And so I put at number 16, Mass Effect. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. So, you guys, I am picking my top 25 games of all time. And Derek is just ranking Bioware games is what's happening (laughs) with these lists. Nice. All right. Well, good. Hey, but, you know, that's consistent because in the past we've talked about our favorite developers. And uh, you weren't kidding. Bioware is your favorite. I think there's a... Another five Bioware games to come it. in my future. I believe it. Because uh, there's more games in the... Well, I won't say which franchises, but in those franchises you mentioned tonight, as well as some others that you haven't even mentioned yet. So there you go. I, I yep. know they're on the way. Yep. So there you go. And hopefully, hopefully, they deliver on Anthem. Right? Hopefully Anthem becomes yet another... Isn't that it's Bioware, right? Yeah. My way off base? I mean, I'm not, I'm I not as can. negative as... Yeah, it's it's Bioware. I'm not as negative as other people. Um, I am disappointed in the direction Bioware has gone in um, under EA, but I still, I mean, I have Dragon Age Inquisitions in my list. You may see Andromeda. So I obviously still like what Bioware does. Um, so I'm excited for Anthem just because I think it looks like it will be fun to play. Do I think it's going to be this epic RBG, like all these games I'm listing off that have great stories and great twists and great characters? No. I think it's going to be a third-person Destiny-style game. So I think we're going to... That sounds fun. Let's do it. Which will be fun, but I'm just saying I don't think it's going to live up to It might not feel like Bioware, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the Bioware we used to have is It might feel more bunchy than Bioware. I'm with you there. Yeah. Most of those people are gone anyways. All right. Well, that is our second round of top 25 games of all time. We still have 15 more games to go, but it'll be about three weeks until you hear more from those lists. Next week, it's all about Sea of Thieves and Game Pass. And of course, we'll talk about any other news that might pop up between now and then. And then we'll take a deep dive into Far Cry 5 the following week so we are starting to get into a series of major releases over the next several weeks hopefully it's enough yeah. to kickstart old man Derek to uh <laughs> to play some games um again old, old cranky man yeah. Derek. yeah and and but buddy just hit that fight button all right <laughs> just hit that fight button i did on rocket league it didn't work so that wraps us up for this um, let me try again 
So that ends our show for this week, episode 118. Thank you for tuning in yet again. And don't forget to read First Thessalonians <laughs> chapter 3. And don't forget Freaking that everything nerd. you say triggers me. I just don't show it in my voice. Uh, All right. Geez. We'll see you guys next week. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? <laughs>